On this episode of NSFW Show, we are joined by Jomo of the Possum Bossy. We got a big announcement on South by So Wasted 2 coming March 9th in Austin, Texas during South by Southwest. We bring a little sunshine into Ernest Smith's life. Who's that? You're going to find out. All coming up on this edition of NSFW Show. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 165, recorded on Valentine's Day 2013. Ernest on a Buffalo. This episode of NSFW Show is brought to you by Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustrations, music, sound effects, after effects templates, or 3D models, check out Pond5. Ever an exclusive 50 free stock media files. Go to pond5.com slash NSFW. And audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. Proceed with the countdown. Uh, yeah, feel me. Yeah, what? It's Jelly D and MC Akbar in a house. True. <laughs> like, uh, life is full of dangers, you know? Full of dangers. But the Admiral here, he's got your back, right? Innovation <laughs> When you're closing on the Death Star and you're ready to attack Put your homies down on Endor, they got ambush from the back And the force field will be fully operational And that's whack, look out rebel leaders cause you know It's a trap Yeah, what he said Verse 2 When you see Marcellus Wallace and he freezes in his track And you hit him and you crash and he shoots his woman in the ass Turn and run into the punch up and got Marcellus on his back Look out, Marcellus, he's a spider. It's a trap. That's when they bring out the gimp back, bar. But you knew that. Bouncers move forward, they can't move, move back. And fishermen and women take advantage of that fact. When they fill in up this basket with a tasty lobster snack. Look out, little lobsters, back away. It's a trap. Ha. Yo, Akbar, aren't you a lobster? I mean, like, if I had to guess what you are, like oh, a squid, maybe? Oh, oh kind of no! Right? What? When you're aiming at the raptor, <laughs> but can't see the other raps. Look out, Ozzy. It's a trap. Clever girl. It's a trap. When you see free fixie bite chains, American spirits, and a pap. Look out, hipster. It's a trap. Brooklyn hipster. It's a trap. When your girlfriend gains a couple pounds and asks you, am I fat? Look out, boyfriend. It's a trap. Say no, boyfriend. It's a trap. When you're rapping with a lobster man and then you turn your back. Look out, me. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. It is go time for NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernets. You know that show, one that's nominally safe for work. Hello, beautiful party people. It's Brian Brushwood, joined as always by my better half, my lower extremity, my third leg, Justin Robert Young. How you doing, JRY? Oh, my good God, Brian. We are ready to just absolutely explode into joy here we have one hell of an episode we're recording this on valentine's day uh we i will promise to you what we will happen in this episode we're gonna do something that may or may not get us investigated by the state of georgia might be might be illegal we might break some laws we might uh dis- we sh- well first of all we should before we proceed too far uh opening track brought to you by our friend mc uh, jelly d mc jelly donut uh one andrew bancroft make sure to ch- subscribe to him over at uh MC jelly, he's, jelly he's d. the best yeah. best ever i mean we all we all know that but you want to know what who's better he's than not him? here he <laughs> means he sucks ass and he always sucked we never great? liked him we, that was the one thing about it. every time andrew's on we're like wouldn't it be great if you, you weren't here and he's just like ah it's a funny joke we're like no really what we need is somebody uh who's made internet videos that are hilarious based on uh the movie that won no awards buffalo rider that's no, who we want to know what him brian with. we don't need that guy we need the guy who just put out a brand new amazing album called Let's Ride Boys. Ladies and gentlemen, the head gaucho of the Possum Posse, Mr. Jomo. Woo! Hey, 
<laughs> was that was that too much pressure when we just turned yeah, it over to you like take over the show jovo and go <laughs> And then, you know what? That would be like the worst prank ever is for us to get somebody to be really excited about having them on the show and then just awkwardly send it over to them and just and just let the the silence sit there and watch them twist in the wind for, for an hour straight. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like a fun time. It sounds hilarious, <laughs> Brian. Seriously, you're a jerk. <laughs> uh, well, here, first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not familiar with the Posse and Posse, you never saw us, uh, Jomo and, and, the, and the Posse were on this show uh, performing... Uh, songs from their new album and guy in a buffalo go see guy in a buffalo go get the new album let's ride boys on the importance of commas uh it is uh, me and brian both just absolutely fell in love with it and we are going to have a big announcement on south by so oh, Waste. let's just let's two. just but let's just bust it out right now no need to tease this we don't need to bury the lead come on man let's all let's right. have it uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, here's what you're going to want to do. Get off your fat ass and bring it on down to Austin, Texas, March 9th. That is the first Saturday of South by Southwest Interactive. Now, I know what you're saying. Hey, man, am I going to need to get some kind of badge for this? No. No. In fact, in fact, no. Badge in in fact as a matter of fact, if you have a badge, you better hide that son of a bitch because we do not allow any of it. If you have a badge, you're banned. Badge, the B in badge stands for banned. The A stand, stands for asses, like get them in there. The D yeah. stands for damn it, man, why aren't you here? The G <laughs> stands for God for damn G. it, I mean it. Seriously, why aren't you here? And what's the E for? <laughs> uh, the E stands for everybody's going to be at the Eastern on March 9th, uh, beginning at 7 p.m. Holy crap, do we got a hell of a show. Uh, me and Brian are going to be hosting the whole thing. We have Ali Spagnola doing her, her big fat power hour, hopefully even singing some, some original stuff. And the first time at an NSFW event, we are very, very, very proud to bring you the Possum Posse themselves. Yeah, man, that's wow. this is the first time we're, we're. Have you guys? Last time we talked, we were asking about what kind of sets you guys do, and it was sort of up in the air. You, you, uh, it sounded like you were doing a lot of writing at that time. Uh, but now, I mean, obviously, you have a whole album, and I don't think, I don't think any of the tracks on the album were in the live set that you did for us. So obviously, you guys got a ton more material. No, were, well, what's it called? Uh, yeah. All right, by mine was right. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, we did that one, but we, uh, you know, we had uh, we wrote like. 11 songs or so for the album there's 11 on there but we have a lot more and we've done a bunch of uh like we're doing at mohawk over here in austin this little bar we're doing like the live guy on a buffalo show where they play the video behind us and we uh sing to the video kind of so we've been doing that and uh, yeah we just kind of we've got a ton of songs and um my problem is we like we play a show and we have to play just the songs on an album we've been doing cd release shows and i just kind of like to you know i don't like to have the set i like to kind of go where the wind blows and uh yeah. it's hard to do when you're trying to promote and hype something you know? so so <laughs> how difficult was it or maybe maybe it was something that you were allergic to the idea to begin with but given the fact that you know you guys put together before you had an album you you had the guy in a buffalo series which of course took off got millions of downloads for every single one of them uh and was there ever a temptation to put like, uh, you know, the boat, like when you did it live, you made up an extra verse, an extra version of the guy on a Buffalo. Uh, I I'd like to think it was just for me personally, but I'm betting you had it in the bag for something else, but like, no, we, we, no, you, we made it up. I think in the front, in your front yard, I think we were like at your house in your front yard, making it up. That's awesome. It's an exclusive. <laughs> There we go. So, NSFW street official exclusive. <laughs> Are on release, guy on a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, he getting around not on a horse. He ain't riding no motorcycle. That guy's on a buffalo. What your mother lovers know about <laughs> buffaloes? They're larger than horses. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, possum posse hype man. Man, you should be our new hype guy. I'll tell our you old what. hype guy was totally awful. <laughs> that was me. Uh, we, we, we can make that happen. Well, I think, I think what, what Brian's asking is and something that, that me and him were talking about when we listened to the album. We both loved it. Uh, it it's, a, it's a decision that you guys have to make to not put a guy on a buffalo thing on the album, considering how big the guy on a buffalo 
videos were, right? Yeah, and we considered it, and everybody was angry. Uh, everybody was, you know, kind of, I don't want to say uh, threatening us, but they were, like, putting the pressure on us, like, you know, you are going to have the guy on a buffalo on the album, aren't you? You know, and we kind of felt like it'd be cool, but part of the charm, you know, this thing was done in a studio, and that, that was our whole idea was we're going to do it upright. And part of the beauty and the charm of Guy on a Buffalo is that it's just not right. You know, it's so bad yeah. and it's poorly recorded and poorly performed. And <laughs> and it just didn't really fit all that well with kind of a studio album. And we did make, I made one small mistake. We met, we wrote a song, this kid that plays with me, he's this, uh, his name's Jess Clifford. He's this Telecaster guitar player. He's awesome. He's like been playing with me in, in, in the band since he was 13. Was, was, he, was, was he here? Because things. I remember you talking about a real young kid. Uh, yeah, he wasn't. He was playing with us at the time. You know, I don't, it was been a year or two since, or I guess it's been a year since we were on the show. And he wasn't with us when we did the live, when we were on y'all's show. But uh, he wrote this instrumental song. And he's just an amazing guitar player. And he's like, now he's 17. And he's 10 times better than he's, any he's of the over the hill now he's all played out yeah. he's lost his fire and energy and juice he's done i know in fact no. used up like a broken old whore <laughs> <laughs> he's really well, you know with guitar players it's just it's kind of like tennis players <laughs> or uh yeah or uh swimming olympic swimmers swimming Power olympic gymnasts. swimmers yeah yeah <laughs> well, so, and, uh, so, okay so what was your mistake then he wrote he wrote an awesome song and and some of the songs on there we went kind of it got a little indulgent and went down this western we decided to do kind of this big western epic couple songs and one of them was he wrote this song and it sounds like it sounds like the score to some spaghetti western and we I loved it when I heard it it was awesome and it's but it's instrumental and it's there's yeah. no words which you know that's not really no one likes us for our music they're always just like you know want to hear the words only we decided to do, do it, and uh, we... Oh, he's taking a moment to pause to think about it. He's collecting his thought. This part, obviously, Genuflecting. Jomo very, very choked up at this point. Uh, you know what? Absolutely. <clears throat> well, hey, hey, Brian, you want to know what? While we wait for Jomo here, sure, let's man. get into uh, the meat of our bit here. Oh, yeah, man. We got actual news. Oh, hold on. Jomo's back. Jomo's back. Jomo Arigato. Uh, yes. Uh, you, are you back? <laughs> You back, sir. I was doing. I was trying to be the robot. Oh. <laughs> you did. You did great. Very well done. But but you were saying it was instrumental, and so y did you not put it on the album because there were no clever words? It's to on, it? No, it's on the album, but it's called. Uh, we decided to give it a stupid name because it didn't. It's not really about anything. We called it Buffalo Riders in the Sky with Diamonds, which is just what it devolved into, and uh, it's kind of just a stupid joke and a reference to Gown of Buffalo. And you feel like the song deserves people better? People freaked out and they thought, thought it was. Well, people thought it was somehow going to have Guy on a Buffalo involved in it. And so people have downloaded that track. And then I know they're just angry because they're like, this is a Mr. <laughs> Mill song. And we thought it was going to be about the Guy on a Buffalo. And so that was a, I shouldn't have named it that. And when I went back for the print, you know, I printed it on the album, I put in parentheses instrumental. Uh, but on iTunes, I don't think it says that. So people are downloading it, and, and yeah, but you're uh, still you're still cashing them well, checks. I, I, <laughs> no. I don't think I have. I guess in in the version I have, I don't think I have that. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. yeah, you do. Yeah, you just skip it. It's the one when you <laughs> when you get to that point in the CD, you just hit next. It's right after the well mannered riders. It's, it's this one of, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It Hold just on. Rolls right into it. It's kind here. of like all part of the same song. This one right here, right? Oh, okay. I guess I just thought that was part of that song. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, it I just rolls into it from the other song. It's not a real, you know, long song or anything. It's just kind of an instrumental uh, breakdown. Well, and it sounds so close to Well Manor Riders. It's all. It almost sounds like a reprise of something. Like, hold on. Let me, like, like when it ends right here. And it sounds like it's kind of half almost ending, but then it's like, let's bring back the awesome, and then it's like this is the epilogue. Right. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I thought it was yeah. just, I thought that was part of the song. Yeah, that was the idea, was that it was kind of like a keep the magic going of this Western, like we're out riding and solving problems. And, uh, but yeah, we, we, you know, we listed it as another track because yeah, I felt like, you know, like that 12 minute track was probably going to be, uh, <laughs> turn some people off. Yeah, but much. Yeah. 
Well, all right, here. Jomo, we're going to talk more about the album. We're going to talk more about South by So Wasted 2, what people can expect when they come down. But we got something to talk to you about. Here's the deal. There's a Georgia uh, state representative. Yeah, that wait. Has, uh, oh, he's he had, he had, he's he's a, a little bit of a dust storm. Congressman, today. right? Like, yeah, representative. All right, let me see if I can find it for you. I have to it's open a, up my... He's a, he's a state representative. His name is uh, Ernest Smith. Okay. And here's the deal. He wants to ban lewd photo shops. Like, okay, now when you say, don't say, you say ban, that's not quite enough. I, th- I think you got to say make illegal. Like, make, you yeah. are committing a crime if you Photoshop someone's face hilariously you, on a naked person. When you say lewd photoshops, can, what, can you elaborate on that? Uh, Anything I, lewd? Well, well here, uh, Jomo, give me an example. I'll tell you whether or not it's fair or foul. Of lewd photoshopping? Yeah. Well, what what would photo- you think? I say lewd photoshop. <laughs> Nah, that's good. That's acceptable. So this uh, this yeah. is actually from that's an article. My, that's my wallpaper. This is apparently the image that that set it all off. Was, <laughs> was, so so right now what we're looking at here is a picture of Mr. Ernest Smith, uh, whose head is uh, photoshopped uh, on uh, what what looks to be uh, a very strapping, well built African American gentleman who's handling what, what looks to be a large pool cue or, or a baseball bat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, it's so well done that everybody it would just everybody's gonna think it's real, you know, because of how natural it looks <laughs> that's in the neck area. That's what I was about to say. Clearly, this is such a fine Photoshop. I think he was disturbed because uh, I think for a brief moment he thought it was a naked photo of him, and then when he found out yeah. that that's not him and he doesn't have that. Uh, uh, that, that, Such uh, a big neck, Billy Club. Then uh, yeah, yeah, he got very. But he doesn't. He doesn't actually look like Leader from Marvel Comics uh, with his <laughs> head just kind of erupting out of his shoulders like a tombstone. It's pretty good, man. Um, here's the deal. So what we want to do, Brian Jomo, I-, I figure this guy, he's just gotten off on the wrong foot with the internet. It's Valentine's Day. The NSFW show has always been about the softer side of the internet. Here's what I propose we do. Let's make Ernest Smith the hero that only Photoshop can make him. So you're let's saying Photoshop- you're, you're saying let's tar- let's turn him on. Let's seduce him to the power of Photoshop. Uh-huh. Let's get some Photoshops of I mean if Ernest Smith saw a Photoshop of him punching out Hitler don't you think you'd feel better about like, you know what? This is pretty rad. Photoshop's a good thing. Hitler was a jerk saying, and deserved to get punched. <laughs> you're but, saying he just wasn't uh, exposed to the right kind of Photoshop. Yeah, man. It's like, look. It's something done a little bit, you know, better or more tastefully done or, you know, if, he, if the neck was more naturally uh, <laughs> attached, he'd be all about it. So, oh, that's what you think it is. You think it was, it was he was offended that it was a bad Photoshop. Yeah, because he's thinking, man, these people might buy this, but now they know it's fake because it's just somebody didn't take the time on the neck to really just get into the details. That's here. a really good point. I think that's so completely here's legitimate. What we, here's what we need from you guys. We need you to make Photoshops of Ernest Smith doing awesome, over-the-toply, amazing things. Yes, yes. And pay attention to the neck. Uh, Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's that's really the, focus on the neck. That's the fastest way to piss off Ernest Smith. Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, let's let's get to know Ernest Smith. We actually have uh, a campaign video for him. Let's let's find out. <laughs> Look at that neck. That's a good. That's a good job. That one's good. Yeah. Well done. Uh, Brian, well done. actually, hold on. Yeah. I think that was also uh, altered. No. 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 I was I, looking at the neck. You could tell on the neck. The neck was perfect. The it neck. Been. You think? Hey. So I'm just saying that what we just watched a video of, of an easily 400 pound man. <laughs> Uh, shaking his groove thing on stage while white people awkwardly watched, uh, while Ernest Smith did not at all change his inflection on his face. No. Uh, that was real. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? You're right. I see what you're getting at, and I agree. Let's take another look. We'll just make absolutely certain of this. Well, because it starts off with his logo. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> There's the 
very see Brian. Uh, also, uh, the coat that he's swinging over his head is awkwardly either going completely in front of his head or not in front of his head at all. Isn't that the way coats do? Plus, plus it goes backwards in time. You notice it goes backwards too. Yeah. I think it's. A, I'm I think not it's sure. You want to know what? I feel like. Let's go ahead, everybody. Get on your Adobe shops. Fire that one up. We're gonna keep coming back to them, and we are going to send all of these to Ernest Smith himself. We are wow. going to let him know that the internet is his friend, Photoshop is his friend. Let's not get crazy with 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 the, with the laws, okay? Awesome. Hey, uh, while we're doing that, <clears throat> let's take a let's take a brief moment to uh, thank our sponsors. Uh, Jomo, you you weren't around, so you don't know about this. Um, yeah. Last week, we got a little. Uh, we in the past here on the show we get we get real excitable when our sponsors are on and uh, you know we want to make up crazy things and bizarre metaphors and act out these goofy tri uh, you know skits that we make up. Uh, we get a little caught up in time to time because one thing Twit's really good at is they're like content do whatever just please don't curse unless you're Brian and you accidentally play a video of. Of MC Jelly D cursing at the beginning yeah. of this, uh, but then, but, but you know, when somebody's put, got money on the line, needs to be pro, bro. That's the slogan of Twit. Pr twit, pro, bro. And uh, last week we were not pro. We were not pro. No. We got into trouble, and uh, there was a proclamation issued. Memos were circulated, and it yeah. was decreed, decided. Well, let me and let me just preface what's coming by saying that uh, I, I and this is I, completely not a joke. I, I very much apologize uh, to Squarespace and, and, and to Twit. Uh, things got a little too far, and uh, I really do apologize. Yes. Well, and as penance, it has been asked that uh, that Justin Robert Young not do the ads, and that uh, I'll take point on the ads. I'll uh, we'll stay on message. We'll get it out. We'll we'll. Uh, it's a new era, basically, where we're going to be focused on it. And I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and start off with uh, with our first sponsor this evening, uh, the five folks over at Pond5. Justin, have you heard of Pond5? Huh. Yeah. Well, if you haven't heard of Pond5, Justin, <laughs> haven't heard of Pond5? Huh. All right. Well, that's cool. I'll go ahead and I'll tell you a little bit about Pond5. Pond5 is the stock media marketplace where no matter what kind of movie you're making, what kind, no matter what kind of digital media you have, you need some B-roll, some stock photos, some kind of, some kind of way to, uh, you don't want to go to Shanghai to record their skyline for the opening shot of your epic. What you want to do is spend a few bucks with the fine folks over at Pond5. In fact, head on over to Pond5.com slash NSFW. They got 50 free clips for you to play from, and they're totally royalty free. You don't have to uh, do, <laughs> you don't have to do nothing. Everything is totally fine. <laughs> you, uh, and if you have media, you can, oh, good God, what is that? Hey, Brian, it's me. Twit sent me. I'm the ad dragon. I'm going to read your ads for you since uh, Justin got suspended. No, that's, 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 that's not, that can't be, I. <laughs> no, Brian, don't worry. Woo, woo. Hot deals coming into the station here with the ad dragon. With Pond5, you can go ahead and get photos, vector illustrations, music tracks, sound effects, customizable motion graphics templates, and 3D models. Meanwhile, the collection's grown by leaps and bounds every day, y'all. <laughs> this ad dragon, this is... Look, um... I, I I understand that Justin's not here, but it's important that we stick to the script. We got to get Pond Five's message out that they have awesome, awesome content. Hey, I'm not wasting any time, Brian, letting y'all know that Pond Five is also the number one place for artists. You can they shaking up the traditional stock agency business with an open, artist-friendly marketplace for professional content. Ooh wee! <laughs> for artists selling on the side, Pond Five gives you control over pricing, and that's unheard of. Ring a ding, 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 ding. That's control over pricing calling for y'all artists. Plus, they can pay out 50% royalty for each and every sale. Higher payout than any other stock photo marketplace, and you can take that one to the bank. Tell them Ad Dragon sent you. <laughs> All right, look, uh, thank you very much, Ad Dragon. Now, if you'll please leave, because Justin Robert Young is my co-host, let me remind everyone that Pond5.com slash NSFW is where you want to go. Uh, and why don't you 
just send a tweet to, to Pond5, just very calmly, very directly saying, we really appreciate you're a sport for the NSFW show. Oh, Justin's back. Justin, how are you, buddy? Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it's a little awkward not doing the ads. <laughs> I know. It, it was. I think it was awkward for all of us. Uh, it's a little, it's a bit of a, it's, it's an awkward change of pace. I mean, I've been so used to doing the ads for so long. So, well, look, I mean, thankfully, I mean, I'm the one taking point on these. I take full responsibility for all the content in the ads. And finally the tyranny of your jackassery is ended and we're yeah. able to stay on point. Thanks to me and the ad dragon. <laughs> so Jomo, what's going on? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> uh, hey, Joe. All right, so Joe, we were talking to you while we're waiting on all of these awesome uh, these uh, uh, photoshops to come in. Uh, we were talking about what the what the difference uh, has been about doing gigs before and after having your album out. Have you toured a lot outside of Austin now that the album's released, or is it a case where like the whole the whole idea of touring around to promote your album is archaic now, and now you're just thinking of awesome videos to put on YouTube? Uh, a little of both. We did. Uh, we didn't. We haven't done too much since the album's come out in terms of traveling around. Like we're going to, you know, the DFW area. We're basically staying in Texas for uh, the next couple months, um, promoting the album. And you know, throughout the year, I think we'll book some stuff out of state a little bit. But we uh, this last year, we we got to do a bunch of traveling. You know, we went to. Mississippi, we went to Utah, we went to Alaska, and uh, so we got to cruise around, and people actually booked us out of state to go, and it was all, I think, because of the, you know, the Buffalo videos, and that was fine with us, we didn't care. Yeah, sure. But, uh, but I mean, we did care, we thought it was awesome, we were proud of that, but um, promoting the album, we we're, we're just kind of, uh, we're going to play it by ear, but we do have, like, we have a video, I really wish I had it done i've got it like 90 percent done but we have a new video it's the first video we've really done it's an original all original and it's for one of the songs on the album it's the one we have this song about uh coffee shop and it's just kind of like this uh you know in austin the high we have grounds a lot of... coffee shop yeah wait a minute yeah you sung that one here okay yeah well it's it's all about you know kind of like the uh coffee shop scene you know and yeah. um so it's it's you know it's pretty uh it's hopefully if you if you hang out in coffee shops a lot like like I do, you get, you're just gonna feel right at home, so embraced how, by that song. How many? Uh, how how long have you been touring with the guys that are that are in the band right now? And, and is was is there ever like how does it work when you make a band? Is there a coronation? You bless them, you're like, and we are the possum posse. Yeah. Or is it you just yeah. like shut up, all y'all? I'm Jomo. I do all the funny. I do all the good music. Y'all's just there to <laughs> twiddle your fingers. Yeah, we uh, we formed we formed it like in two thousand nine. Who he was there on the show. He plays the banjo. We were uh, just basically at my parents' house in um, West Texas, and they were having a party. And I, I, we just kind of decided they needed some sort of entertainment, something uh, you know going on. And so we just decided to form the band. My dad was in the band, and he played the piano. He played the keyboard, and uh, he was. We had that one gig, and then we kicked him out because he was like trying to <laughs> trying to steal the show. You know, everything turned into like this kind of like this lounge jazzy kind of. Uh, <laughs> He's Las just Vegas soloing. Thing. No one needs yeah. a fifteen minute piano solo, Dad. <laughs> no, Dad. This is a bluegrass. There's not. It's not going to turn into like a little samba. Like you know when you hit the button, the demo button on the keyboard, yeah. and it goes into like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so we kicked him out, which was, uh, if he's listening, it was uh, it was the worst decision we've ever made. But if he's not, <laughs> it was it was a no brainer. And then, um, so then, yeah, we kind of went on. We just kind of played. We just kind of screw around a little bit every now and then, just not not really played it that often. But Brian, the guy that was here also on the show, he plays bass. He and I started playing together in. I think 2007 or so. And um, it was just the two of us. And we would go to like some restaurant and uh, 
we used to play at this this Cajun restaurant in town, and we had to stand by the bathroom. Like, there was this hallway where people had to kind of squeeze between us to in the hallway to get to the bathroom. And so, you know, a serious, feels serious. Oh, we got the stutters. You're really Dang playing it. a song, and you feel like everybody's really feeling it, and then people are, or somebody's like, you hear noises coming out. And, um, you know, we started with that and we got censored at the restaurant. They told us we weren't allowed to sing a couple specific songs that we censored. Like, what? Like, what? Like, what? Yeah. what? 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 What, what is what, so what controversial? Well, we had uh, we had one song. Yeah, we had this one song that was called the Birdie Poo Blues. And it was like my my grandma likes the song, you know, but, yeah, but okay, I well, what think is it, it was more about people eating, trying to eat. And they're in the song is uh. about, you know, bird poop it was kind of weak sauce i felt like but then there was also one that was uh i guess it was insulting towards older people i don't know i don't know uh, if you, i think it was a bad fit the restaurant you know um uh, in but, general but, what, what what were the lyrics jomo let us be the judge yes come on here here at, at brian and justin's good time cafe we love nothing more than a little wholesome entertainment maybe a little country and western susan to blow our minds what you got because because if there's one thing that i'm known it was for totally, it's my discretion it was and great totally, career choices uh i mean it's like it was totally what we got you all froze up there oh hang on you're back now go jomo go uh, i you know I, I could the line i think that they didn't like out of the birdie poo blues this is dumb that I mean, I'm having to talk about being censored in a song called The Birdie Poo Blues. It's embarrassing how hokey and not edgy it is. But I'm, yeah. you know. Just say, just say the title again. I don't think a lot of people got it at home. Say the Birdie Poo Blues. You know, I, I would, I'd play it for you, but I just, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to do it. No, it was like, uh, the, if you don't want to, if you don't want white, what was it? It was uh, the, the faster they fly, the harder they hit. Telling you, man, you gotta watch out for that stuff. And I said, stuff. Yeah. And it was, yeah. You know, I was like, get it, old people. And the old people were like, yeah. And uh, I, I don't know. I guess the guy who, I guess the guy who booked the place didn't think it was uh, appetizing. I don't know. So wait, it was, it was because you did a call and response to old people. You're like, hey, old people, you get that joke? I almost said the s word, and then I said stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, uh, you know, people are trying to eat here. You're talking about bird poop. You're talking about, uh, I don't know, you know, inappropriate stuff for the for the Cajun restaurant. And and we weren't we were invited back, but we were um, we were asked not to play. I mean, several several songs. It wasn't just that one. It was about uh, uh, my wife. Just I've just got a note here. She remembers specifically. Um, <laughs> you, you, was, hold on. I'd like to point out that you were actually physically handed a note that you're reading from. Keep going. I was handed a note, and now I've got another one. Oh, here it is. Yes, this one says, lazy eye. Uh, Did you call because... out somebody's lazy eye in the middle of a performance? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it's uh, I think it's on that one song that, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's in the All Right, All right, right By Mine. mine. Yeah. Girl oh, that, yeah. Uh, the one hazed over lazy eye. Yeah, sure. Yeah, hazed over lazy eye. How can that be offensive to everyone in the restaurant? Oh, and, come uh, on. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's been, my other note here says, gooey and white. Uh, that was, I guess, another offensive thing that we talked about. It was talking about bird poop. Yes, well, sure. that's, thank goodness. Not what you're thinking, Brian. Right, because I would be totally dirty. You know what I am thinking is it's time to make over the image of Ernest, uh, Representative Ernest Jerkface. Ernest, Ernest Smith. All er, right, well, Ernest goes right, well, to we'll Congress. go through those in a second. I do want to get back to Jomo after this, though, because I have a question that I, I was talking to Brian about, and I think it is a very interesting decision you guys made on the album uh, because you guys are very, very funny. And I want, I want to ask you a question about that, but that's a little tease. We're going to go into these Photoshops here now. Uh, Brian, right. what do we have here? I'll tell you what. We already have a tribute. You know what would be better? You know what's better than showing him punch now Hitler is showing him. What's his name? Ernest something? Ernest Smith. Smith. Ernest Smith. State representative from uh, Georgia. 
Ernest Smith as Ernest the, P. Smith, the Ad Dragon. See, like already <laughs> a very popular character, the Ad Dragon, Ernest Smith. I, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, Brian. You know, uh, I, I don't. I'm not really comfortable with with the popularity of the Ad Dragon. <laughs> really? Does it make you feel uh, bad? Well, I mean, like it's it's a, basically it's one step to me getting replaced. Yeah. Like, well. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Ad Dragon was pretty good. Ad Dragon was. Uh, oh, really? Was this right. is where it's going now. Already. Already. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to say better than you. I mean, you know, my first choice is I'd have you do the whole show and I'd just collect more, the paycheck. Just more professional. Yeah, yeah, certainly more professional. Way more pro. Ad right, Dragon. Let's just move on to the next photo. All right, here we go. We got Ernest Smith as Iron Man 3. We got him. All right, well, there we go. We got. I don't know who he is here. Is it the. Is I think it's Kanye and somebody else. <laughs> we got. And look, by the way, can we can we go to the Kanye photo? Sure. What a neck! <laughs> Boy, look at that neck! What a neck there on the right! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nicely done. I didn't even notice it. It's like it's this wearing... one looks like the, the neck looks like he would be a Men in Black alien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got the ad dragon. We got him leading. Uh, looks like China's overthrow. Uh, we got him in The Walking Dead, uh, taking over. Um, there we go. Of course, shot in Georgia. Well, here let's let's definitely save The Walking Dead, and we're definitely saving um, the neck. So get rid of these other guys. <laughs> so Walking Dead is the best. That's the best one, man. That that thing is right. that's some good neck work. There we go. The, uh, the, the neck does look very good. That's how we that's judge our <laughs> photoshops. <laughs> Jomo, we're just gonna go the to you. Uh, like the shotgun. Uh, yeah, the shotgun looks like it's behind the neck. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Here we have him doing MMA uh, against Hitler, which is pretty good. Nice I'll touch. Tell you what, Hitler's lats look awesome. Nice touch, toucan monkey. Putting <laughs> your putting your fat Twitter right across Hitler's leg. Let's uh, definitely. That's a throat kick. Uh, there we go. Reading rainbow. <laughs> The it's, thing about Hitler, the thing about Hitler, you never really saw him without a shirt on, but that dude had a tan. He was very, <laughs> he was very tan underneath. Very pasty up top, very tan underneath. Although, Can you imagine Hitler like laying out, but he has to put like a a bag over his head, so he's only tanning everything below it. <laughs> now hold on, now let's take it back. Hey God, take a look at take a look at the color matching on Ernest, and take a look at the color matching at Hitler, and tell me like, is this necessarily the pairing of heads to bodies that you would have gone for uh, first? Of course it is, Brian, because in Photoshop anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we also have let's see, reading we, we, Rainbow. We got Gandhi. Gandhi, uh, let's let's go with Gandhi. I don't know if we want. <laughs> yeah. The shot. <laughs> Come on, dude. Everybody loves Equus. Everybody thinks Daniel Radcliffe looks fantastic. This is this is clearly letting him see me. The problem was it was never classy before. It was always gross. Look at my baseball bat. Now it's like, look how much I like this horse. I really <laughs> look at my baseball bat. I really like this horse. <laughs> look at that horse. The big eyes, the bushy teeth, the Georgia congressman. <laughs> Okay, my producer Tara Cates is telling me it's not a horse; it's a congressman. <laughs> it may, in fact, it may be in a fact be a state I've been wondering. Um, I've been wondering what's going to happen if you take a porn star's face <laughs> and put it on a politician. Oh. See what that is going to be interesting. You know what? I know. Uh, there's only one way. If only we had a giant wet wear botnet that was willing to make it happen. All right, I'm 100 percent buying this one. This one may be my all time favorite. Right there, and by the oh, way, there he is. look at that neck. <laughs> he man, uh, and On it looks cap. like a very tiny Ernest Smith head, <laughs> just perched atop what looks to be a test tube of a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's gorgeous, man. Nothing wrong with that. All right. I like to imagine that the tiger there is screaming, "Re-elect Ernest Smith!" <laughs> <laughs> That's Battle Cat, man, not the tiger. That's Battle Cat. Oh, stop it. Okay. <laughs> Eat crap, you. Uh, let's see. All right, so we're going to save all those, but I think, oh, there we go, Superman. We're going to get all these. Hold we on. Are... 
<laughs> going to send us all to Ernest Smith. If we That's hear back from Smith. Ernest Smith's office, we will update you on the next episode of NSFW show. But I think Jomo's on to something. Can, what, what do you mean? By just judging Oral them all by the faces next? faces on politicians' bodies. Okay. What about, uh, what about him as I as Akhtar? Does that do anything for you? Uh, how about, here we go. Um, just an idea, putting it out there. Oh, oh, doctor, by the way, huge shout out. Everybody go ahead and at reply. Oh, doctor right now on the internet, uh, or on Twitter rather. O H D O C T A H. He is, uh, still in the hospital. Wait, he went to the hospital for what? Uh, pneumonia. He got really, really sick with pneumonia, but but he went to the hospital. I was texting with him Ooh. yesterday, I believe. But everybody, go go uh, send your sir, your warm thoughts to O Doctor, and Man. maybe a few pictures of him on that first guy's body. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, man. Well, uh, that's that's what I got so far. Uh, you want to take a moment? Thanks to the folks who make this this show possible. I mean, I'll, I, I I don't know. Why I'm asking you. You you want to sit there and be silent while I thank the folks who make this show possible? Because you know what, folks, I'm talking about. I'm talking about my friends over at Audible. Justin, you ever use the Audible? I'm sorry. What? What? No, no, you don't. That's so weird. Because I could have sworn. That you told me on Audible I should get the uh, the Looming Tower. That's uh, you come back here. Don't 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 you go. I'm just saying you you never you've never once taken advantage of their thousands and thousands of audio programs of all varieties, historical speeches, classic comedy routines, books, fiction, nonfiction, all read by the finest narrators in the business. None of those, Justin. You sure? Huh. That's weird. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, if you go to audiblepodcast.com, that's audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW, you can support NSFW show and uh, and actually get a free book. Try Audible free for 30 days. Sign up for the gold plan. You get a free book. You can get two free books, I believe, on the platinum plan. Woo -woo! Well, hold on. Who's that? Ad Dragon here, y'all, with another hot <laughs> deal coming on into the station. Audible.com, of course, is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For listeners to NSFW, Audible's offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try their service. One audiobook you may consider downloading is The Looming Tower, y'all. <laughs> so about now heaven. To download so that weird. Audio That's the same book free. that Justin was recommending. Ad, <laughs> Ad Dragon, was there any kind of reason for that? Uh, no, y'all. I, I just like reading nonfiction. Sometimes I don't like any fanciful nonsense up in my head. I like to learn about the world around me. All it's right. just an Ad Dragon thing, y'all. It's great, great. Keep going. Go to uh, audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW to sign up and get your free credits. Is that, is that it? Ad wow. Dragon? Yeah, uh, Brian, listen, it's just me, the Ad Dragon. I'm so excited to be on this show with y'all. Uh, I'm such a big fan. Uh, uh, well, we're honored to have you, Ad Dragon. Um, now, I, I, if you could leave so we can get Justin back on, that would be fantastic. Oh, because uh, that ain't nothing but a pile of biscuits. I'll be out of here. I'll see y'all next week. Y'all just a trip. Okay, so long, Ad Dragon. <laughs> Where is the Ad Dragon? I don't know. I think uh, part of the country. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna wait until 30 seconds after the ad is over to speculate on where the ad dragon came from because I don't want I don't want it to infect nothing. The ad must be pure as the oh good he's back. Hey Justin, what's going on, buddy? I mean nothing. It's it's rubbing you the wrong way, isn't it? Not being able to talk. I mean it's just you know. Uh, you know, it's it's, so it's it's for the good of the show, bro. And it's, it's not for the good even, the it's nothing about about the ads. It's just, you know, like it just, it, it ruins my momentum. Yeah, Like well, I'm doing a good show. You're doing a good show. We're connecting. We're on a rhythm. And then I'm not even going to lie, Brian. It just seems like you're, you're more into the show once ad dragons on. Like it's just, it's, it's, <laughs> I, I don't know. Suck, I feel it, suck like, it up, bro. I feel like it's, it's it, like there's a wedge being suck driven it up. between it's for, us. It's for and the his good name of the show. Dragon. Suck it up. It's for the good of the show. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, all right. We got, uh, we got a few more. Oh my God. People are already saying that it's, it's going to be ad dragon con. Uh, <laughs> 
and and uh, you know, listen, it's, it, it's a little startling. He's been on the show for like 15 minutes, and Ad Dragon is already. I bet you he gets added to the album art before I do. <laughs> you know what? I can actually sponsor that. I I, I can be behind that. Uh, what about now? There is there is one thing that uh, that we ought to uh, tell people to do is uh, go ahead and tell our friends over at Audible on Twitter. Just say thank you for supporting NSFW, and that's it. Nothing else. So there's that. Uh, hey, we got a few more ads here. Uh, who is this supposed to be? Is this just supposed that, to be him? Is that, is that a Yo-Yo Ma? I guess so. Uh, I don't know. Let's ask the one musical guy we got here. Jomo? Hey, I mean, that's the only cello player I know, so I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would say, I would say, yeah, yeah. Nope. I'm sorry. It was Hitler, and now you just approved uh, Hitler. Uh, this goddamn no, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, I don't even want to explain that one to the audience. Uh, well, okay, I think this is in every way the reverse of the effect that we're trying to go for we here. We don't want this. This was the opposite of what we want. Uh, there we go. Ernest Smith as Michael Jordan in Space Jam. Uh, not bad. Ooh. Not bad. By the way, um, uh, Brian. Yeah. Go back to that one that, that you just uh, switched off. Did you Did you close that no, out? Well, well. Um, but, uh, person. Uh, I'm not gonna say who it is, but I'll just say <laughs> that he's eligible to become the next pope. Just said, not fake, but exceedingly gay. Uh, yes, I think that's the point. <laughs> the point, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, man. I think I think that's all of them. I think we got. Unless there's any last minute entries. Uh, oh wait, hold on. We got somebody. We. <laughs> That's him as Senator Tankerbell from the Mr. Show sketch. Oh, Jesus. Deep cuts. <laughs> oh, wow. This is like, this is how you can tell, like, the audience knows us because, like, we, it's us and eight other people who are deeply in love and will quote Mr. Show references all day long. I'm, I'm also not even going to lie. I love that sketch. I would not have been able to call that out by first blush like you, you did. You I would see, not have been able to call out You Senator can't see, Tankerbell. like, there's, there's, uh, there's David Cross back when he wasn't hateful of the world and just into being funny. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. All right. Well, well we're going to gather all these up. Uh, uh, Brian, uh, pull up any other good ones that, that come in, but I want to ask Jomo something. So, uh, possum posse is like huge for the guy in the Buffalo thing. Uh, so many of your songs on that album are really, really hilarious, but you got a couple on there that like aren't funny. And I was talking to Brian and they're not meant to be funny that like that takes, uh, that takes balls to be like, the band that does funny songs and then put a couple on there that aren't meant to be funny, that are just awesome songs. I'm thinking of The Open Road and, and, and Amarillo specifically. Uh, is that something that you think about? Or are you just like, hey, I, I write these songs. Here they are on the album. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah, I definitely thought probably way too much about it. And I, I, I would love to be like a serious songwriter, you know, it'd be cool. Uh, but I'm horrible at it, and uh, I, so I used to try to write serious songs, and everybody was just like, uh, you know, nice try, about, Bubba. Yeah, nice get try. back to the funny. Yeah, why don't you why don't you play us a funny one? And so I would, and and so that's what I think. I I think that's just my natural place is to write just dumb, you know, songs. And uh, but yeah, then the, you know the the newer ones that I've written, some of them are a little more serious, or a little more even the serious ones are generally pretty kind of out there, kind of dumb, you know, by most people's standards. And so I, I, I yeah, I just, I, I was thinking, well, you know, I've got, we've got a couple of these that we like to play. And when we play at our shows, um, yeah, we've got quite a few that are more serious and it's probably 10, it's probably 10 to 15% of our songs total. It's not a whole lot, but yeah, yeah we, we kind of thought, you know, um, it's kind of a way to maybe we just don't know what direction uh, we're going to go in. And so, you know, this is a little more representative of kind of what we, what I, what we're writing versus, you know, so, okay. well, I mean, they're great. I mean, I, I don't think oh, you thanks. should feel, 
Uh, you, you totally shouldn't feel self-conscious about them because you know they're they're really really good and i think that in in the 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 language of the album like they fit you know you have something that is like really really silly like like well-mannered writers or all right by mine or something like that and then you have these these songs that retain kind of the musical credibility to it uh but are not punchline songs which i think are, are yeah awesome. yeah well okay so let, let me let me throw you a curveball here um what's up with critter camp what uh where did that come from and what is it and uh is was it it looks like an ad uh that, i i don't what is what is the story on the critter camp song uh well you know we did this kickstarter project last time we were on the show we were trying to raise money for the album yeah and we were yeah we were pumped about that and there was a rewards level you know you set rewards at different you know levels and at one of the levels, uh, you got like a, uh, I think it was like a custom song, and <laughs> and we would write you a song, which is cool, you know, no big deal. And um, so there's this lady through, uh, there's a kind of a we have like a we have like a competing lady on Facebook named Possum Posse, and what? she has a, she's like a possum adoption lady. She uh, rescues possums from, you know, I don't know where, but <laughs> from possum land, wherever possums yeah. go yeah. to be rescued. Yeah. Well, she actually, I mean, right. here's the problem is that th these possums get arrested very, very young. <laughs> and instead of going to ju uh, juvie, uh, they have a rehabilitation program uh, where, where they, they get them back into society. Exactly. And they're doing good, but <laughs> they're doing good instead of graduation rate on these whatever. possums is no. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, so, so she she donated she's enough, a, and, and she's a friend of this lady is a friend of the possum lady, and she's into animals. And she, I guess, thought, well, you guys named your band after the uh, an animal, so I'm sure you're, you know, that's what you're about. <laughs> and so um, she said, well, here's what I want for my song. Um, I want you to take all these videos I've got on my YouTube channel and make another guy on a buffalo, but just about all these animals. Okay, now did she? What kind of latitude did she give you? A none, but she <laughs> didn't under, I don't think she understood, the, you know, the difference between a song and a video. And we never put anything else on our whole channel. I mean, that's all there is is guy, guy on, on a buffalo. buffalo. Sure. And now critter camp, and it's and, and I, the only reason I did it. You know, normally I would have been like. No, man, that's not part of the deal. But <laughs> I looked at her videos and they were, uh, some of them were just so crazy. And I was like, I got it. This is kind of cool. So the videos that she pointed you to included like the fainting goat and, yeah. and the, the, the fox biting at fingers for somebody using the yeah. internet. And I got to say, honestly, it was a little tougher than Gallon of Buffalo because there was like, uh, I don't know, you know, maybe a hundred videos. Oh my so God. They weren't all <laughs> gems, you know, they weren't all keepers and I probably didn't even see them all, but I went through and I watched a ridiculous amount of clips of, <laughs> of, of animals. With animals that's, and this lady's doing, you know, she's doing really cool things. She's kind of rescuing these wild animals, but they're like, she's got this whole, yeah, videos of like different animals. There's just hundreds of them, and they're just some of them. There's just nothing that happens. All right, so let me let me <laughs> let me throw. Okay, so I I want to bring everybody up to speed who's watching the recorded version. We watched it in the pre-show, but I want to watch it again for everybody who uh, in the audio listeners will have a good time too because I actually like the song. Uh, everything is just the way you picture it. If you're wondering what the visuals are.
What's wrong with that goat? Oh, catch him. Oh, he's... Ah. Oh, he's okay. Go play with your friend. <laughs> Can we all agree this rat's blatant disregard for his own children's safety is appalling? And oh, there's that box on a stove and drinking Mel Yellow now. I'm confused. Well, I don't know about the Critter Camp, but I've been told about the Critter Camp. Yeah, what you been told about Critter Camp? You and me are the same guy. Okay, I bluffed about being told about the Critter Camp. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Nobody's told me about the Critter Camp. Yeah, I know. We're the same guy. Dude, what's with the attitude, man? I don't know, you just keep asking me about the Critter Camp. I was curious about it, man, because I thought it was kind of interesting. Sorry. Yeah, but we're the same guy, though. Yeah, but <laughs> did you see the, uh, the super fast hedgehog tongue thing? That was crazy, right? It was super fast. Did you see it? We are the same mouse. <laughs> okay, so, so okay, so she asks you to make uh, a, a guy on a buffalo out of her animal videos, <clears throat> and you decide to tell uh, a bizarre narrative of a schizophrenic mouse. Uh, and, and those are all clips that she provided for everything, like the little bouncing well, up. Well, that, that's, that's really just the protagonist, Brian. You know, like, the story is about the critter camp. It's told from the, the POV of the schizophrenic mouse. Uh, yeah, yeah, but like the whole last third of the song, just it just drops the critter camp and just goes into how this mouse is crazy talking to himself. Uh, well, yeah, she, she said, do the, I don't know what she had in mind, uh, honestly. And she and I, she didn't provide them as much as she just said, here's my YouTube channel, get to work. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> this is more than I bargained for at this benefit level. But uh, I got into it, I got kind of into it, and I decided it was kind of awesome in a way, I don't, because it, because, uh, in a way, I was already going above and beyond the benefits, so I kind of felt like I had a little bit of creative freedom. I was just going to do what I wanted and, you know, make well, it We feel weird. like you earned it, right? Like, like you went, uh, you're doing so much more than she asked for. Then... Yeah, so I thought, I'm going to make this weird. I'm going to give her, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm going to make this just something just completely dumb. That's <laughs> what I generally do. I'm gonna make fun of uh, the the rat's blatant disregard for the safety of its children and the yeah, was... yellow yellow drinking fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just yeah, I, I don't I don't know what she had in mind or but she was happy with it at the end, you know. And that's kind of cool. It's kind of like, wouldn't? I mean, it's kind of like uh, having a sponsor in a way, because except the sponsor just says just. Yeah, you know, do what you yeah, want you to didn't do. Need, you didn't need uh, no you address. Did, you did a great you job. Did. You Dude. know, because if it were me, it would have been something that I would have got halfway through it, and then Ad Dragon would have <laughs> sang the rest of it. <laughs> you would have sat there silent looking at clips. All right, we also yeah. have uh, Senator, Mace uh, Windu. Mace Windu, R.L. Stein. Uh, I'm R.L. Stein. My neck <laughs> is weird. I'm apparently a black man. I live alone. <laughs> I'm R.L. Stein. My vitiligo has affected my hands, which I've used to roll a poorly rolled blunt and finger my tiny glass of port. <laughs> uh, I think this do y'all know? Who, uh, do y'all know what R.L. Stein really looks like? Uh, not this buffalo-faced uh, uh, state <laughs> representative. <laughs> I assume. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, yeah, no, we saw, we saw him, uh, in the, uh, the Nerdist just did a music video and he was shockingly close to the way Justin Robert Young has been portraying him. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I don't think I could identify R.L. Stein. Oh my God. Uh, he looks like an author, which is, uh, my way of saying he's a nondescript white guy. Yep. Got his cool. face on a buffalo. So, uh, <laughs> Do, do do you get people like do you play guy on a buffalo live? Hold on, this is a uh, whole show. Oh no, god damn it! The ad dragon <laughs> photoshops are already coming. <laughs> it's a Photoshop lawyer of the ad dragon. Oh man, gotta tell you, man, ad dragon was killing it. I hate to, I mean, you know, I love you, Justin, but if you've been thrown off the case, if anyone else needs to play backup for me, ad dragon's my go-to guy. Pick him well, first from my dodgeball team. Whatever. <laughs> hey, uh, hey guys. Hey, what's up? I'm getting, I, I'm getting another, I'm getting a note. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. What, what's it say? It says I, I'm supposed to leave pretty soon because get out of here. We never loved you, Jomo. We all, we were just biding time until you get the hell out and then join us for <laughs> South by So Wasted. We, we haven't given the time, date, or location, Justin. Yes, we have. Uh, uh let's give it again. At seven o'clock at the Eastern. Uh, that is on 6th Street. Um, 
it, we will also be playing a go game. More details on that to come. That will come before the show. But the the music, the comedy, that's all going to happen at 7 p.m. at the Eastern in Austin, Texas, on 6th Street. Uh, no badge. March 9th. Don't you dare show us a badge. Badges aren't welcome. That's Saturday. right. Uh, Jomo, real quick, what can people expect? There we go. That's Arl Stein. Uh, what can people expect from the Possum Posse oh, March 9th it's be so at the crazy. Eastern? Go on. Ah. Uh, um general uh it's gonna be it's gonna be like nothing you've ever <laughs> imagined and and everything you've ever dreamed at the same time probably we haven't talked about it yet but like <laughs> all right uh, it's gonna be a good show that's all well that listen it's going to be amazing look at that there's there's uh ernest smith wow. a guy on the buffalo himself <laughs> See, that's smart. That's good PR. Now he'll be popular. That's called synergy right there when you get a guy on a buffalo. Yeah, uh, that's good. Neck work, too. All right, get out of here, Jomo. We love you, man. Take care. <laughs> all right, all right. Everybody Thanks, pick up uh, the new album, uh, Let's Ride, Boys, The the importance on the importance of commas. That's the subtitle? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, it's got it's, uh, it's got a subheading. Yes, subheader. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll, look, I'll look forward to seeing y'all up in austin in a couple i'm couple totally weeks. about to click i'm gonna hang up on you you're gonna be gone That's for the show amazing. thank you so much you. jomo bye jomo click he's gone remember jomo those were the days i'll tell you what he is uh i'll tell you what i think ad dragon's a bit of a jomo if you ask me <laughs> <laughs> jomo uh, arigato <laughs> so uh i guess that but, but, but wraps it up I mean, it we had a hell of a show here tonight. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Jomo is super cool. And I wish, uh, man, I wish, I felt like you and I are a little bit starstruck because we're such fans of the album. And I bet there's somebody who doesn't know why the Possum Posse is rad or whatever. And they're just they're like, would you guys quit just, you know, licking spittle off of his chin? Well, but I feel like, you know, when it comes to that, like, you need to get into that album because that album's awesome. Like, yeah. it's just something like I've listened to it a crap ton on my phone and you've listened to a crap ton all the time. So, like, you know, it was so awesome. Like, it was so awesome that it's like you played it at the beginning of every single live uh, broadcast that you've done, not only for NSFW, but for like your uh, video game playthroughs and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it's the opening song in in the jury podcast that I do on Saturdays. Like, it is an awesome album. We both really love it. So if we can't share that stuff, see that's not positive. What, you're no, what, are, you, what are you talking about? I think it's age positive. It shows that even when you're old, you can rock a man thong and have a soccer ball. True or false? Is that a family photo of your dad? I'm like, you know what it could be. <laughs> uh, it also could be Arnold Schwarzenegger, from what I'm given to understand about his physical condition these days. He's he's, a, he's an older man. He's a, he's, a, he's an older gentleman. He's, he's an older man. guy. Uh, all right. Well, um, Brian, happy Valentine's Day. I feel like the the chat realm is and always will be my my number one Valentine. Oh, dude, you and me both, except for uh, yeah. People are saying they're asking if this is the famed Grumble Thong of. Uh, <laughs> it may may or may not be. <laughs> it is, and the prehensile body parts that go with it. Uh, no, seriously. Oh, God. Uh, Chimera. What? Look at Chimera in the chat room. He's got uh, Dude. new ad art or I new love it. album art. This is, see, this is what we need. This is what the show's been missing. It needs to be NSFW <laughs> with Brian Brushwood and the Ad Dragon. I'm you know, sorry. It's, it's universal, Justin. Everybody loves the Ad Dragon. I spent, how long have I been doing the show? I can't get on the goddamn cover. And, and within uh, less than an hour... Of this Malouk getting on the show, he's already on the cover. I don't even know. Uh, look, man, look, maybe you can come back into Twit's good graces. Someday they'll let you participate in the ads, but until then, it's just me and the ad dragon. Me and uh -huh. the ad dragon could be rocking it to the end of time. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, all right, let me just throw this to Oh, wait, that was the wrong music. <laughs> Nobody cursed. There we go. Uh, man, it's weird to uh, it's weird to not have a movie draft minute to toss to at this moment. Oh, but you know, I mean, like, are you in the war room? Are you are you are, are you going to be the first person to to link to have two wins touch? You're already oh, the king shoot. of all seasons. I didn't even think about this. Like, I was I wasn't gonna 
I wasn't going to triple down. I just figured like I could rest on my laurels for a little bit here. But you're saying I should go for blood. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what. We got to figure out who our, our roster is. Yeah, um, who's in, who's out. For this, for this season. I'll tell you what. My brother, I went to a wedding and I was hanging with my brother. And he's like, uh, he's as, as not techn technologically savvy as anybody I know. And he's like, every time I see a movie ad, I think about... Uh, your your movie draft because he was there watching our winter movie draft live. That's a sticky idea, man. It is People really, really, really like it. It's uh, everyone loves it. We should figure out a way to take it a little bit more mainstream. Absolutely, <laughs> people are begging us to get OMG Chad as the uh, auctioneer again. People want Film Riot crew back in. I think Film Riot as a big crew should have a seat at the table, for sure. Yeah, let's bring let's bring them in, uh, and then we'll figure it out. We'll send we'll, we'll send a. Uh, an invite over to uh, to spill, right? But but right now, all that matters. South by So Wasted 2, March 9th. The Eastern on 6th Street begins at 7 p.m. for Ali Spagnola, me and Fry, and the Possum Posse. Yeah, it's going to be a blast, man. I, I always loved you. Dying to fire. Next Tuesday. <laughs>